Lindsay, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about jobs. Whether you're coming from overseas or you're already in New Zealand, we're going to talk about how to get a job in New Zealand and specifically about five tips that I have for you. You're not going to want to miss this episode. Here we go. Let me start off by saying, I wish I could say it was easy. It is easy if you're on the short list of jobs that they're looking for, maybe it's a job that there is in high demand right now or that they don't train for uh, and so that's easier to get. But if you are in a, in a position that they have plenty of people or they prefer to have New Zealanders in that position, it can be quite hard, whether you're overseas or even already in New Zealand. And so for my husband who's in IT, not a problem. Generally IT is you know transferable around the world, but I as an academic professor, totally different. And like just the fact that I don't follow through exactly the pathway that other people do here also counted against me. And so today we're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about the five tips that I would give you in looking for a job in New Zealand. My first tip, if you are looking for a job in New Zealand and you are not from New Zealand, whether you're coming from overseas or you're already here, is to be very clear about why you want to live in New Zealand and know that your future employer is looking to hear if you are going to fit in in the work culture, but also the culture of New Zealand, if you are the type of person that they want to have on board or just in the country in general. And so just be aware of that. Like they're very aware there's going to be, you know, generalizations that they're going to have in your mind if you're American or you're from Europe or wherever. Uh, and so you need to kind of overcome those in their brain. Like they need to know that you're not going to be this really pushy American if you're American and that you legitimately want to come to this country and that you plan on staying. So all of that is kind of loaded in that question of why do you want to work in New Zealand so be very clear as to why what is your appeal to New Zealand it's beautiful I'm outdoorsy I love everything about New Zealand and the more that you can talk like you know how much you would really rather be there and that you feel it's the right place for you it's the right place for your family that you want to settle there and like you like they just want to see that you've thought it all through <laughs> that you're actually going to come and that you're actually going to stay so that's my first tip for you today Number two, make sure that you have a good CV or resume. So they call the resume the CV here in New Zealand, and it's the same thing. It, so like if you have a resume from the US, that's exactly what you would send here, okay? And so some tips on that is make sure that you are very clear about the skills. Um, don't be generic you know, adapt it to the job that you're applying for. Make sure that your cover letter adapts to the job that you're applying for. And now one of the questions that I get all the time is like, you know, do I come across too aggressive or, you know, you know, like I'm amazing on my resume and is that not going to be accepted in New Zealand? And so I've asked New Zealanders, I have, I've hired people in New Zealand. I've looked through a lot of resumes and I would say that it's okay. I think it's okay to be very clear about, you know, why you're right for the position. If you can quantify that on your resume or your cover letter, I think that you win every time. I think it's more in the interview and then how you talk about yourself is more of like, you know, maybe calm it down a little bit if you're like so amazing. But the resume is really a place to sell yourself and to distinguish yourself from other people that are applying and to actually just get the interview. If you are looking for like some CV templates or cover letters, I just came out with some. Just go to kiwiamericans.com. They're amazing. I actually, I have been teaching how to write resumes and interviewing for 20 years, you know, as a professor. And so I have combined all of my knowledge. I've literally looked at thousands and thousands of resumes and I'm just, you know, I've kind of combined what I think is the perfect resume template into multiple ones or like depending on your style, you can, you know, you can pick one. And then the cover letter though is the same. Like the way that I have written the cover letter, I'm telling you, you're going to get the job with this cover letter. But this is just, if that's helpful, if you already have one, you don't need it, whatever. I'm not trying to sell you one. I'm just saying if you're looking for a template, those are great. So you can check those out on my website. Number three, be aware of the words that they use in the country that you're applying for. So the, the words that may be used on a resume or a CV in New Zealand could be different than the ones that you're using. And I have seen this multiple times. Now they understand resume. If you use the word resume instead of CV, they, under, they, they use the word like referees a lot, but they also understand references. <laughs> okay, it's not that they don't understand, but it's also good to be aware of some of those terms that are different because I think that that kind of gives you an edge. It, it shows them that you're not interested in just plowing through and getting a job here and 
but you're understanding the culture, you're understanding the difference, and that you've adapted uh, in the way that you write your resume. And that all depends on the job that you're getting, and I can help you with that uh, if you need help. But like, yeah, like just be aware some of the words are a little bit different. And number four, similar to the one that I just told you, just be aware that the name of the position or like the role can be totally different in New Zealand. So for example, like I'm a university professor or a lecturer or academic staff. And while they use those terms here, it's also very common to use the word tutor to describe what I do. We're in America, I would never describe what I do as a tutor. I'm like thinking like like an adult sitting down with a kid tutoring them in science. Like that's what you picture, but it's actually a tutor is a role, um, you know, like a lower level academic staff role. And so those are key things. I've helped clients do this a lot. We're like, I'm not finding any jobs. And I'm like, I bet you we're using the wrong terms. And so try to figure that out in your industry. Let me know if you need help, but like also like the way that they describe things in the job description, you know, like in the job posting can be words that you don't understand. Uh, for example, like, you know, I'm an academic staff, but like a course is called a paper and you would never think, you know, and just like, you know, grades versus marks, you can kind of figure out, but some words are actually hard to figure out depending on your industry. So definitely kind of take some time to figure that out or just at least think, hey, maybe it's called a different term here and try to figure that out. I'm happy to help. Number five, personal contact wins every time in New Zealand. So if you're in New Zealand, I want you to physically walk into the place that you want to work. If that job, if you want to work at a place that doesn't even have a job posting, but you want to work there, you can still walk in there and likely get a job. Like I, my kids even were able to do that. They said, I want to work there. They walk in. Sure, we'll hire you. So don't always be limited to the jobs that are posted. Okay. Especially if you're here. Now, obviously, if you're not here, you can't walk in, but the personal contact is huge. So what you should take away from that if you're not in New Zealand is phone calls, Zoom, see if you can get some sort of personal contact with them. Say, hey, I want to ask you some questions. I really like, you know, your organization and maybe want to work there someday, like something like that. Try to take like a different approach because that personal contact where they feel like they've met you already, that they know you will go a long way in getting a job. So if you're in an industry that's kind of hard to break into, that, you know, they don't really hire um, internationals for very often, you may kind of have to need to go roundabout. And so do the best that you can to make some sort of personal contact. That is my advice to you. All right, well, I hope that those tips were helpful to you. I just wanted to share a little bit about my personal experience. Now, like I said, my husband had no problem, but for me, uh, it was not easy. I applied for a lot of jobs. In fact, I thought I got the job. Like they're showing me my office and just to find out like a couple days later that they're giving it to somebody who's from New Zealand because I just felt more comfortable with that. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. I have literally been teaching this class for 20 years and like providing an international experience I think would be beneficial, but you know. Um, I ended up getting hired by another American and I think that that's how I got in. And so once you get in and you've worked at a place for a couple of years, then I think you're fine. But like, yeah, it can be very difficult depending on some of your industry, other industries, not a problem at all. But um, so just be aware of that. And there's just kind of different ways. I'm happy to work with you if you're trying to find some workaround uh, to get in, in a New Zealand and just kind of understanding the culture and understanding the work culture will definitely help you because it is, can be quite different than where you're from. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely comment below with any of your advice to anybody looking for a job there, or if you're hiring, maybe put that out there because there's always people looking and people just dying to get here. It's because sometimes it's easier to get the job first before you, then you can get the visa a lot easier. But comment below any of that, I would love to know and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.